One of these men spent two years studying the psychiatric techniques of African witch doctors. What is your name, please? My name is Raymond Prince. My name is Raymond Prince. My name is Raymond Prince. Only one of these men is the real Raymond Prince. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Barry Nelson, and Kitty Carlisle on To Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Evening, well, it's fun to welcome you to, to Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Anison, the headache remedy with a special combination of ingredients to relieve pain, to relax tension, and to soothe irritability. Anison. All right, are we all ready and set to go? Yes. Yeah. Eager and uh, okay. Would you open up that envelope then and follow along as I read? I, Raymond Prince, am a psychiatrist. Some time ago, while working in Africa, I had an opportunity to make a study of tribal witch doctors. I spent two years living among the natives, observing their witch doctors in action. I studied sorcery and the medical use of rare and exotic remedies for sickness and disease. As a psychiatrist, I was most interested in the native methods of treating mental illness. The witch doctor's treatment can cost up to $300 and takes about three months. It can last much longer if the patient doesn't pay in advance. I must conclude that our modern psychiatric techniques are really not much superior to those of some African witch doctors. Signed, Raymond Prince. These three gentlemen all claim to be Dr. Raymond Prince, psychiatrist and expert on witch doctors. Let's start the questioning with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you, bud. Um, Dr. Prince, number two. Uh, it says here that you worked in Africa, but I would like to know, what's the name for witchcraft in Haiti? I don't know. Oh. See, well, uh, number three, <laughs> um, does each tribe have its own doctor? Yes, typically each tribe does. Um, number one, I saw a movie once in which the witch doctor wished the fellow would die and he died. Is that possible? I believe it is. Number three, American psychiatrists can't do that, can they? <laughs> if they do, they don't talk about it. Uh, number two, how long does, uh, where do they get the $300? <laughs> well, uh, <coughs> the, uh, people have a currency, uh, or they can, uh, do a certain amount of field work on cocoa plantations, uh, et cetera. Barry Nelson. Uh, number two, uh, are many of these difficulties marital in nature? <laughs> <laughs> do they have? Surprisingly, yes. Uh, number... Like here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> number one, what does juju mean? Um, it's a word to describe a kind of bad medicine or... Um, um, I'll do you... leave it at that. Do you agree with that, number two? Yes. Does it have an object of veneration in mind by any chance? I believe I understand no, that. Number three, does juju have anything to do, say, with superstition? Juju is a matter of high power. It's a matter of, uh, of great power bestowed on the... Kitty. Thank you. Uh, number one, does a psychiatrist have to have an MD degree? Yes. Number two, does a psychoanalyst have to have an M.D. degree? No. Uh, number three, where is Macumba practiced? I don't know. Number one, where is Voodoo practiced? Haiti. Uh, number three, can you tell me exactly where you were? Number two? Yes, Nigeria. In Nigeria. Number three, when you were in Nigeria, what did these people give in, in terms of 300? Uh, psychoanalysis is expensive there as it is here. The uh, Nigerian population, of course, does have the Nigerian pound, so they do have a currency, but goats, pigs, hogs, and so on are... Thank you. Number one, do they believe in dolls that you stick pins in? No, but Tom Poston does. <laughs> Tom? 
Thank you. Number three, uh, uh, I understand that uh, some African tribes have two different kinds of medicine men. Is that correct? Uh, very often you'll find that there's more than one medicine man. Their techniques will differ. Uh, in the same tribe, I'm talking yes. about. Uh, number two, uh, now, it, it seems here that these uh, patients are obliged to pay. Is there such a thing as African socialized medicine? <laughs> no, the witch doctors are very strong on this point. They want to be paid or else they won't release their patient. <laughs> <laughs> From what? Well, there you From have the difference. Yes. And now you can vote for or against it as you mark your ballots immediately, please, without change and no consultation, of course, permitted. As you vote now <laughs> for number one, Number two, or number three. And our team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? Very well. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one. I didn't get a chance to ask him any questions, and I think he deserved something. <laughs> <laughs> Peggy Cass, your choice. I voted for number three. I always thought jujubes were those things that you ate in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Said, number one said that you had to be a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist did not have to be a medical doctor. No, no, no. And a, psych a psychoanalyst, I always thought, did have to be a medical doctor. No, That's what my husband opposite. tells me. The no, analysts have to be doctors. No. Hmm. Girl, <laughs> you can settle this later between the two of you. Barry, what is your Choo Choo has to do with uh, venerating sub object uh, that has a... Uh, something to do with superstition. That's what it is. It's not as funny. But <laughs> I don't know if Mr. Prince is the same man, who, uh, psychiatrist, who just came back. Uh, he said that uh, he cured a native, and uh, he charged him a price, and the native wouldn't pay him. He said, I have to pay the witch doctor. He said, why? I cured you. He says, yeah, but the witch doctor sent me to you. <laughs> <laughs> One. Kitty. I voted for it's number three country. because I thought he gave a good answer about juju, uh, not what you read in the movies. And uh, the other two are marvelous, though. It may well be anybody. So there, it's evenly split, as I see it. It's two for number three, two for number one. And with that, we go into the charm circle of truth to find it's out whether there's two. been any hex put on this voting and, as you learn, how close to the truth you have come and find out which of these gentlemen is a psychiatrist and expert on which doctor. So will the real Dr. Raymond Prince please stand up? Thank you, sir. Was this a real honest story that you read somewhere yeah, about? Yeah, that's, that's a true story. Uh, is, is, is that, uh, did you, are you, you know that Are you story? the man who came back and told that? Not my story. Well, it's your story. He collected. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Number two, what is your real name, sir, and what do you really do? My name is Bob Goodman. I'm an insurance broker. <laughs> and number three, you split the votes. What is your real name, and what do you do, sir? My name is Philip Wenig. I'm president of Data, Cor Data Incorporated, a research and data processing company. Gentlemen, I don't have to tell you too much because whatever it was, you did fine, and that meant there were two incorrect votes, and that's mighty good, believe me. Twice $250 is $500 coming your way from Anison, as well, of course, as on your way out a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Anison. We thank you for being with us and only hope you enjoyed your visit as much as we did. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> and now a word about Anison. This message can save 100 million people hours and hours of pain, headache pain, pain, depression, pain, tension, pain, anxiety, pain, fatigue, pain, pain. It tells about new Anison, about Anison's new pain-relieving formula. Anison today contains what two out of three doctors call the greatest pain fighter ever discovered. Watch the syndrome of headache pain, pain, depression, tension, anxiety, fatigue, pain. Simply take two of the new Anison tablets. In minutes, headache pain is gone, so depression's gone, tension, anxiety, fatigue, pain gone. The next time pain strikes, remember, Anison today contains what two out of three doctors call the greatest pain fighter ever discovered. Take new Anison. Now, my friends, I bring you our next team of challengers.
What is your name, please? My name is Victor Trucco. My name is Victor Trucco. My name is Victor Trucco. And so, my friends, follow along, if you will, and listen while I read. I, Victor Trucco, am an assistant conductor and also a prompter at the legendary Metropolitan Opera House. As an opera prompter, I follow the score and help those singers on stage who may have forgotten the words or the music or possibly have gotten mixed up in their stage directions. I sit facing the performers in a special opening set in the front of the stage, right at the center of the footlights. I am shielded from the audience's view by a low hood. My head is just above the level of the stage. Since my back is both to the audience and to the conductor, I must follow his beat through a rear view mirror. The position of the prompter exposes him to hazards from on stage. These include flying plates, overly energetic dancers, and assorted animals such as horses and donkeys. Signed, Victor Trucco. Very well, panel, you've heard these three gentlemen all claiming to be the same one by name, Victor Trucco, by occupation, the hazardous one of being the prompter at the Metropolitan Opera House. Let's start this cross-examination with Barry Nelson. Barry? Thank you, Bud. Uh, number three, how many rehearsals do you have to attend on an opera? That depends um, on the opera, whether it's a routine standard opera or... Uh, how many rehearsals does an opera normally have at the Met? Well, uh, standard opera like Traviata, of course, will get uh, much fewer rehearsals than a new opera like uh, The Last Savage. Number one, Joan Sutherland tried a new part recently. Do you know what that is? It's Traviata. Uh, number three again, Richard Tucker tried a new part this season. Do you know which part that is? Yes, he did uh, Trovatore. Number two, this uh, uh, being a prompter, what uh, kind of a background do you need for that? Well, basically, you study the scores of the opera, primarily the vocal scores as opposed to the musical scores. Kitty. Okay. Number one, how many stage managers are they to push the people on and off during an opera? Oh, there are about seven or eight. Thank you. Number two, who is the director of choreography at the Metropolitan? That is Alicia Markova this year. Thank you. Number three, uh, how many languages do you prompt in? Four. Four. Number one, when you prompt four people all at once, how do you give them each the cue? Well, you usually give the cue to the most important one. And let the others fall by the wayside. Well, you help them out. <laughs> <laughs> it's better to be a prima donna then. It is much better. Uh, number two, what, what have you been hit by when you've been in the prompt box? Well, being hit, uh, in uh, Bohème there is always the danger of flying crockery, of course, in the Café Momus scene. Uh, there is also, from time to time, the danger of a dancer falling into the prompter's box. Thank you. Tom Poston. <laughs> Number two, uh, what are you doing there? You can't prompt dancers, can you? No. <laughs> uh, when the ballet is on, uh, of course, I can sit. If it is a long ballet, as, for example, in Aida, I can leave the prompter's box uh, and get a cup of coffee downstairs in the electrician's booth or what have you. Thank you. Number one, uh, do you conduct? I do conduct. I haven't conducted the Metropolitan, but I do conduct. Now, do you ever conduct in addition to the conductor wh whom you can see in the mirror? Well, I, I have to do all sorts of conducting to the singers, you know, from my pit. Yes. Thank you. Uh, number three, do you recite when you're in the prompter's box? Uh, I don't know just what you mean. Well, let me put it this way. Do you ever recite aloud? Well, I read them the lines, if they have lines. Is that Al what you mean? Aloud? Fairly loud. <laughs> Peggy. Thank you. Number two, do you have the score in the box with you? I have the vocal score, which has only the piano part. Uh, number three, who wrote E Puritani? Bellini. Um, number one, um, Garson came and directed an, an opera at the Metropolitan. Could you please tell me the name of that opera? I think it was the Flater Mouse. Thank you. Number two, who conducted at Spoleto last summer? That was Thomas Shippers. Number three, whom does Leinstorff conduct for? Boston Symphony. Mm -hmm. uh, and number one, who wrote a La Tenambula? Bellini. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, number three, what opera is Hans Sachs in? Meister singer. Gee, they know a Last lot. <laughs> number two, who does a man or woman play the marshal in? Oh, that's a woman. Number... And that's it. Boy, what a shame, I tell you. I'm amazed at how much you all know. <laughs> but in any event, it's time to see how well you put your knowledge together by marking your ballots, if you will, please, for the one you think is the real one. 
Yes, vote I now. Peggy. <laughs> vote now without consultation and vote for number one, number two, or number three. All marked? All right, Tom, we start with you again. For whom did you vote? I voted for number one because at the beginning when they introduced these gentlemen up on the platform, he stood like this, and I guess that's part of his life. <laughs> Permanent prompter's crick. <laughs> Peggy, what is your choice? He did. Oh. So I voted for number three because he looked down and I figured he was going to see where those plates went. <laughs> Barry? I thought number one was the prompter because all through the questioning, he looked like the one who was giving us a line. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kitty, which one do you think is the I one? thought they were all absolutely fantastic. I've never seen anything like it, but I voted for number one mostly for Tom's reason. <laughs> Very well, then we have three for number one and one for number three, and we go with that one into our truth circle to find out whether we've hit it on the nose or not. And learn now which one of these gentlemen actually is the prompter at the Metropolitan Opera House. So will the real maestro Victor Truco please stand up? I must add my plaudits to those of my, my panel friends here, who, as far as I'm concerned, have no peers anyway, but uh, you really were great. You Marvelous. were just simply splendid. It was a magnificent job. Uh, number one, <laughs> yes, they did all right. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My real name is Luigi Luccioni. I'm a painter and etcher of landscapes and still lifes. What is your real name, sir, and what do you do? My name is Mitchell Rubino. I am a, an international mover of household goods. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did a beautiful, beautiful job. And, of course, in checking the score, you already know that there were three incorrect votes that you trapped them into. And at $250 each, you can add that as fast as I can, I'm sure. In this season, there's $750 coming your way from Anison. And on your way out, you'll be given a gift package of all of the fine products from the makers of Anison. We give you our thanks, gentlemen, which is not enough, I know, but you did give us grand entertainment and hope you had as much fun, too. Good night, and God bless you. And now, a word about heat. Minor backache from muscle strain? No rubbing can make salves or liniments penetrate to reach that pain deep inside muscles and joints. Get liquid heat. Just brush on heat. Heat soaks deep into skin fast, and when heat soaks in, pain flows out. Heat replaces pain from deep inside muscles and joints with hours of soothing relief. For relief of minor backache from muscle strain, get heat. When heat soaks in, pain flows out. And now a word about Dristan Nasal Mist. For sinus congestion and head colds distress, use Dristan Nasal Mist contains the decongestant most prescribed by doctors to bring quick, deep relief. Look, the nasograph shows almost no air coming through this victim's nostrils. Now, Dristan mist sprayed into one nostril. In seconds, it penetrates deep into swollen nasal sinus passages, promotes drainage, thus relieves pressure, controls post-nasal drip. Now, nostril sprayed with Dristan shows free breathing restored. Get Dristan nasal mist. All right, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Paula Simmons. My name is Paula Simmons. My name is Paula Simmons. And will you follow along once again with me, panel, with your copies? I, Paula Simmons, raise sheep. After shearing, I personally spin my own yarn and sell over 40,000 yards of wool yarn a year. By careful selection, my husband and I have developed an unusual strain of sheep with very distinctive wool. What makes our sheep unusual is the fact that every one of them is black. To the best of my knowledge, I am the only breeder of exclusively black sheep in the world. Signed, Paula Simmons. <laughs> Panel, 
Well, these three ladies all claim to be Paula Simmons, raiser of exclusively black sheep in the family. So we'll start this uh, line of questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, Bud. Uh, number three, this is a fact that as a sheep grower, you may know something about. In Australia, the sheep are in danger from a bird. Do you know of uh, the kind of bird I'm talking about? No, I come from Scotland. I wouldn't know about Australia. Maybe you do, number two. Have you heard about this? I am Australian, and I don't know about it. No? Number one, do you happen to know about it? No, sir. Well, I'll be hornswoggle. <laughs> uh, number one, tie me kangaroo down. Number one, uh, where's your ranch? In the state of Washington. Where's yours, number two, please? Australia, New South Wales. Oh, number three, where's your ranch? In Scotland? In East Lothian, Scotland, yes. Peggy Gass. Boy, um, um, hmm. That's my butt uh, Number three, uh, do the black sheep really lead the sheep? Well, uh, I have all black sheep, so no one really leads. But, uh, but number two, like in most places, if they have one black sheep, is that the leader? Uh, I've always wondered about number two, please. Uh, if you have a large herd of mixed sheep, I would assume yes. But again, I have all black sheep. Yes. Gee, who leads? Oh, you got nothing but generals and no soldiers over there. Uh, number one, there's a certain Spanish uh, person that comes from a certain part of Spain that's marvelous as sheep herders. What nationality is that? They call them Basques. I don't know if that's the nationality. All right, Barry Nelson. All right, number three, who sang Il Trovatore? <laughs> What do you, what, uh, what do you call your sheep? I mean, not by name, but what type of sheep is it? Uh, it's a cross breed between Lincolns and Corriedales. Do you use machinery or do you hand shear them or uh, uh, is my, much? My husband does the shearing and it's all how by much, hand. Th thank you. How much is wool per pound now? Uh, it's about uh, 40 cents in this country. It'd be about two and six in Scotland. Number one, to whom do you sell your wool? Direct to customers. What, number two, uh, what kind of illnesses are the sheep most prone to? Worms, generally. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty. <laughs> number one, what is a tag? It's a dirty piece. And number two, what is a merino? A merino is the sheep that you most commonly find in Australia. It's one uh, that's fairly heavy in build and it has a great deal of wool. Thank you. Number three, the Bedouin's tents are black. Are they made of your black sheep's wool? Uh, I don't know. Number one, do you know? No, I don't know. Is your spinning done, number two, by hand? Or you yes. don't have a spinning wheel that you work like uh, Marguerite and Faust? We're back to the opera. <laughs> huh? Yes. Yes. spin with a wheel. You do. How long does it take you to spin a pound of wool? <laughs> well, that's all the time we have. We'll have to leave it right there and vote with what knowledge we have gained and vote well if you can and see how well you do as you learn uh, marking without consultation for number one or number two or number three. You're all finished already. Well, that was quick. Tom, which one did you select? I voted for number one because I figure she's got a suit on made out of her wool. It's the only black suit in the place. <laughs> Peggy, what is your choice? She just shook her head no, but that probably... <clears throat> well, I felt anybody that would say that sheep died of worms really knows them and must have them. <laughs> Barry, which one do you think it is? Well, I, I think uh, Peggy did hit the uh, nail on the head, if I may throw that epigram in. Yes, I should, do. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I voted for number three. I thought she seemed to ha be a little more confident about it. Well, there we have one each now. With which are you siding? I Did voted you? for number three because a tag is not a dirty piece. A tag is a male sheep. Silly. <laughs> it could be a dirty <laughs> male sheep. <laughs> Uh, and, and number three said, was very hesitant about the price of wool, and I figured that it fluctuates a good deal, so she didn't want to say exactly what it cost because it might be fluctuating as she spoke. All right, there we have it. Widely split this time for the first time tonight. Let's see how well we go into our charm circle with this one. In Tell discovering me before. Tell <laughs> me before. <laughs> In discovering the truth, we will now learn which one of these young ladies actually is the real razor of strictly black sheep. So will the real Paula Simmons... Please, stand up. Have a seat, if you will, so we can hear you. Now, 
Now, you want to settle this little squabble with Kitty now? What is a tag? The tag is the very dirtiest part of the wool in the rear. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> now, I have a... Kitty, uh, do, do, you wish, do you wish to have her back up that statement? <laughs> or shall we just let it go at that? <laughs> oh, my. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Jillian Craftsman, and I'm a writer of short stories. <laughs> and number three, you got the major portion of the votes. What is your real name and what do you do? Uh, my name is Nancy Chuck and I'm in charge of the office for the 1964 Open Golf Championship. <laughs> well, it's easy to check the score because you repeated what happened the second round tonight. There were three incorrect and at $250 each, add it yourself. 750 nice, bright, shiny dollars coming your way. That from Anison, as well as the gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Anison. Ladies, we thank you very much. You seem to have had a good time, and so did we. It was nice meeting you. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> Well, I trust you'll associate with a better breed of sheep from now on. <laughs> I want to go back to opera. <laughs> <laughs> You're much safer on that footing. Thank you all very much, as always, for making it a bright and shining evening. And thanks to all of you, too. And I trust we'll see you again next week at the same time. And I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. And in the meantime, may I remind you gently but firmly, on behalf of Anison, to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. has been brought to you by Dristan Nasal Mist, the decongestant nasal spray for relief in seconds from sinus congestion and head cold distress. Dristan Nasal Mist. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, this program was recorded. <laughs>